Hello and welcome back to Bobbin's Minecraft Let's Play, featuring the Hoarder's Delight mod pack by Nicole VW. I'm Bobbin and you're watching episode 12. What you are looking at right now is my power generation and I won't make you count them. There are 120 magmatic dynamos here in six rows of 20. And you can see all these crucibles up front. But if we take a closer look at the crucibles, they're empty. Now, you might be wondering why are they empty? And the reason they're empty is actually very simple. I had so much lag that I was having trouble playing the game. And so that was really just being... It was a disaster. I wasn't able to get much done. This episode is actually being shot a day later than I expected because I just spent a whole day doing nothing but dealing with lag. There are a lot of different causes of it, and, and so I was going and shutting down things and starting them back up and trying to see what was causing it the most. And what I found was when I finally shut down these crucibles, about half the lag went away. Now, I'm not suggesting at all that the crucibles are at fault for the lag. They might be. I don't know. However, something about this setup, whether it's the crucibles or all the plumbing around it or something like that, was causing a lot of block updates that were causing things to have to be rendered constantly in the world, and that's what's slowing my base down. In fact, if you, if you go a long ways away from this base, even though it's chunk loaded and everything is still running, the lag goes away. It's all about the graphical updates. So what I did was I quit feeding cobble to these things and just sort of let them run out of cobble and I cut off the flow of lava. I'm not sure why there's lava in some of these tubes right now. I must have done something... I don't know. It's not moving. It's not causing any, any serious lag right now. Um, so I'm satisfied with that. But anyway, when it ran out, I needed to replace the lava because I need to generate power. And as you can see, I've still got lava in these magmatic dynamos and they're generating power. I resorted to the old standby of going to the nether and pumping out the lava. Normally, of course, that would cause tremendous lag. Historically, the endothermic pump from Extra Utilities is specifically designed to address this. And that's what I'm using. Let's go take a look. Okay, so here we are in the nether. I had some extra um, essence stone, which is very attractive, and I used it to uh, build around here. It's also, the blue stuff at least, is a light source, so that's kind of nice. Heading down. Here's my endothermic pump. It's receiving RF from its own little magmatic dynamo that it feeds all by itself and then it pumps out all the excess lava into a tesseract which goes into the basement there and into the magmatic dynamos. This one endothermic pump is fine. It actually takes and pumps enough lava for everything. I don't know if I will ever have a capacity problem with it, but I don't right now. It's able to fuel, I guess, 121 dynamos when you include its own. It replaces the lava that it pumps with stone. And I'm not sure why it missed that spot. That's kind of interesting. But anyway, this prevents you from having a lot of flowing liquid in the nether, which is already pretty laggy, and just generally keeps it from being a nuisance. It also makes the nether a little bit safer in some sense, because there's less lava around. I don't know what the radius of this thing is. I would, I would have to look it up, and I haven't done that. But it'll go for a while. When it gets done, I'll probably move it and continue pumping lava. Eventually, I may mine out the, the nether as well, and when I do that, I'll get a whole bunch of netherrack. Netherrack melts down in the crucible to produce a whole bucket of lava instead of a quarter bucket like cobblestone does. And I can actually move the crucibles here to the nether where they are out of sight and don't cause the same sort of lag problems that they're causing me in the overworld. And that may be a good solution to that. In fact, to avoid some of the lag problems, I'm actually thinking about moving my crops eventually so that they will be growing somewhere where they don't cause any sort of visual updates and so I don't have problems with 
them causing lag either. So let's go back to the base and see what's in store today. So I'm here in my warehouse, which is a good place to keep track of how supplies are coming along for completion of various quests, even though the quests themselves are not underway. And since I'm here and we're going to talk a little bit about quests, let's start by opening up the quest journal and seeing what's done and turning in a couple of quests. As you can see, there are three quests with unclaimed rewards. They are all in the hoarding block section. It's Alive was completed last time. Let's go ahead and just turn that in, get 127 blocks of gold. Abbey is now completed. Got all the gravel roads made. I don't know that I need these. Um, I'll take them anyway. And then the quest that just finished is Holidays, which is to complete 100,000 silver bellwood. This one finished really within the last hour. Uh, I'm not going to turn in the third one today. Um, it gives the VCO block as a reward. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the VCO blocks. One thing that could be done with it would be to break it down into a whole bunch of Minecio. I already have something like 12,000 blocks of Minecio. I've actually stopped growing Minecio at this point. So, yeah, this will go into storage and I will figure out something to do with it later if I need to. Looking at other quests, in Hoarding Food, Taste the Rainbow is now 60% done. And no other quests are currently in progress directly anyway. I'm going to set up a machine to do the cola sodas today. Coconuts for the Pina Colada quest I'm at 78,000 of. And I also have, if we come over here, 75,000 pineapples. So that's actually making pretty good progress. Um, spice leaf for the cola quest. I'm already over the 100,000 that I need for that one. That's okay. I, I do need lots more spice leaf for other things. And I think that may be all that's going on right now. Bone meal is a little bit low. I don't think I'm going to be able to start another fruit right away as soon as the coconuts finish, but that's okay. It, it can wait a little while. Two other food items I'm currently working on are onions. I've got 52,000 of those. And strawberries, I've got 25,000 of those. In hoarding energy, nothing is being worked on. In hoarding flowers, nothing is currently being worked on except for collecting flowers. However, today I am going to set up a machine to start making the mana pools. The machine I set up today is going to make the diluted mana pools that will eventually have to be put into a mana pool themselves with mana in order to obtain a mana pool. The diluted mana pools, I'll just make a hundred thousand of them and they will stay stockpiled for a while. The reason for making those now is because I'm still making living rock. As you can see here, I've got almost 270,000 living rock. It's going into a resonant cache which holds 640,000 items. This cache is not big enough to hold all of the living rock that I will need to finish the quest but the big one that requires the most is in fact the mana pool quest which requires a half a million living rock once I get that living rock removed from this cache there will be enough room in the cache to hold the remaining living rock I need with room to spare I wrote down the numbers for how much I need I don't see it let's see here my quick calculation which may be wrong is that besides the half a million for the mana pools I'm gonna need another 384,000 living rock so doable it's gonna take a while in hoarding blocks as you saw uh, holidays is completed I'm not turning it in today canvas is at 37 percent house is at 83 percent and none of the others are currently being worked on. The next easy one to work on is going to be stained panes, which involves turning in blue stained glass panes. That one should go 
pretty quickly once I have the glass. In hoarding stuff, the only thing currently being worked on is diorite walls. They're at 24%, so almost a fourth of the way done on those. The new or broken quest will be begun once house is complete and the clay bricks are freed up to make flower pots with. Finally, in Are You Out of Your Mind, cobblestone is still only at 1%. It's most of the way to 2%, but it's not there yet. Now, one of the things that has come up is I was looking at some more quests and how much material is involved in some of them. I talked last episode some about the sheer number of ender pearls that are required for one of the quests in Hoarding Energy. I want to look briefly at Hoarding Flowers and Hoarding Blocks today. In hoarding flowers, one of the things that came to my attention is that this living wood quest for making the mana spreaders, the living wood is coming along nicely. I'm going to need 600,000. I'm not there yet, uh, but it's all the living wood that I will actually need other than just what I use for my use sort of along the way setting up mana distribution or whatever else, whatever else I do with Batania. However, this quest is also going to need 100,000 gold ingots. I have 14,000 gold ingots. So I'm going to have to step up my game a little bit on gold ingots. The same thing can be said over here in Hoarding Blocks of this quest. It's a bird. 100,000 redstone lamps. That's going to take 400,000 redstone and 400,000 glowstone. I currently have 40,000 redstone and 41,000 glowstone and the truth is even after I get 400,000 on those quests some of the other quests require a pile of glowstone and especially a pile of redstone so I've got to get a lot more of those materials as well. And I haven't really decided for sure what I'm going to do on it. I've already increased glowstone production. That's why I have as much as I do now. I'm growing it using magical crops. That may still be the primary source. However, gold, redstone, glowstone, and bone meal, which I also need quite a bit more of. I have ways of getting bone meal, but I'd rather get it faster and have other sources. These are all products of sieving dust in the automatic sieve. So I may start sieving dust again in order to get some more of those materials. Haven't done it yet, but you may see that between episodes. Now today I want to set up two machines. The first machine I'm going to set up is going to simply make the diluted mana pools for the quest to make 100,000 mana pools. This is actually a very simple setup. So I'm just going to need a cyclic assembler and I'll need to connect it to items and to power and then I'll need to filter in some living rock. So if I come over here and plop down a cyclic assembler and put in some item conduits. Let's see if I can get those in there without too much lag is kind of causing me a little bit of a problem trying to jump around. Hmm. Let's just take it straight across over here. All right, and I will disconnect that briefly while I put in the filter. We are going to be inserting off of the pink network living rock. And inside here, I'll go ahead and load the schematic we're going to be creating very simply 
a diluted mana pool. Now I need to hook up the power. And the item flow. A little easier if you hook that up first so you don't have as many cables in contention. And it's producing them quickly. Now I have to output them somewhere. This machine... I think I'm just going to output on the back. Let's go and configure it to orange on the back. And, you know, I want to make exactly 100,000 of these things, and I didn't bring caches to do that. Let me go make some caches that will count out exactly 100,000 of these things, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I made two caches with a capacity 10,000 each and two hardened caches with a capacity of 40,000 each. That will total 100,000 and then the machine will back up with one extra stack made. I can use an extra stack of mana pools so that's not a big deal. Let's just go ahead and set this up to extract and these to insert. And we should start to see mana pools coming through. So we've made almost 300 of them now. This will actually exhaust the supply of uh, living rock in the warehouse pretty quickly. At that point, it will, it will just go along as new living rock is made. And once all the living rock is made to do this, then living rock should start to pile up in the warehouse again. Now, on the subject of counting things out with caches, the second machine I want to set up today is the cola machine. The cola machine will make the colas for the very first quest in the food section, which is soda pop, for which we need cola soda. And one of the ingredients of that is something called bubbly water that's made in a presser. Between episodes, I went and made an apparatus for creating bubbly water because the presser is actually a little bit slow. Here, if we look closely, I've got 16 of them set up. I've got a cyclic assembler making fresh water, which is what goes into the presser to make the bubbly water. So I've set up 16 of these things, and they have actually finished now. I've got two... Hardened caches containing 40,000, and two regular caches containing 10,000, and that makes 100,000, which is exactly how much bubbly water I need. I also have lots of extra bubbly water in here. It doesn't actually have a use. I will just trash that when I clean up this machine. So let's pick up these caches and take them over to the place where I'm going to assemble the cola making machine. I have stacked up the caches here. They're in no particular order. I did not actually move these into the warehouse. The reason is because that just would have been a needless transfer from one cache to another. They're going to come out of these caches and go somewhere. They might as well just go straight into the machine. I don't need these caches right now. Eventually they'll be empty and I'll do something with them. If they were in the warehouse, I could draw off of the warehouse. But if I put them in the warehouse as I made them, I would not have been able to stop at 100,000. So. The cola recipe requires a pot, bubbly water, sugar, or honey, but I'm using sugar, and spice leaf. The fact that I'm using sugar means that this will not actually start right away because at the moment all of my sugar is going into making cakes. But I'll go ahead and set up the machine and it should start right away as soon as the cake making finishes. So I'm going to need a couple of cyclic assemblers, one of which will be making sugar from sugar cane. The one that's making the sugar from the sugar cane uh, let's see let's 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 take that in the back. It'll get sugar in the back and it will push the sugar off into the cyclic assembler which is over here 
to the right. This machine, let's make it the green section, will accept sugar and I'm actually going to make it accept spice leaf as well in the green. And one of these days I will stop clicking because I will make up my mind how I want this thing. This machine will then accept bubbly water in the top on the purple and that will just fill in the bottom. I'll probably put the pot here in the bottom too. And I'm going to make it output on the right where I will have a... Um, I didn't bring that machine over. But anyway, when, when, when I get this machine working, I will go ahead and set up a uh, redstone comparator and a QDS to submit the items. And so that will go off and count towards credit on the quest. So the soda water or bubbly water is going to be coming in the purple side on the top. And I'm going to just devote the entire... Um, that entire side of the cyclic assembler to the soda water so I don't care about item flow because there's just one item going in it and in that section and that's just going to be fine I don't even need a filter on it So we're filling up with bubbly water. The spice leaf and the sugar cane that are coming in here are going to have to be handled separately because I can't have one of them piling up and blocking out the other. So I'm going to use this item flow regulator that I used for the milkshakes earlier. So let's filter what's going to go in here. Let's go ahead and put the spice leaf in the orange and the sugar in the magenta. And then I'll just go ahead and disable the blue. Now because I've disabled it, I will also have to come over here and make sure that I'm using a two input NAND that doesn't have the blue. That's exactly the same thing I did on the previous recipe, so this doesn't need to be updated. It's still working. Now let's hook this machine up. And I'm still getting quite a bit of lag here. It is much better than it was, but there's no denying that I'm still getting lag. So this thing actually came on because it does have things in all the hoppers that it's interested in. Now the sugar is going to go in here, or the sugar cane is going to go in here. And it is going to get made into sugar, just like that. In this one, we're going to be receiving both spice leaf and sugar. And they'll be going in there like that. I don't have the pot with me. Let me just run over here and get a pot. Hopefully I won't lag completely out here. Uh, there's a pot right there. So to set up this recipe, we're going to need a pot, sugar, spice leaf and bubbly water to make cola soda. This is a shapeless recipe. It doesn't care what order we put these things. Most of the Harvest Craft foods are shapeless. 
So the next thing I have to do is I'm going to have to get my inputs going into their proper locations here. I need to actually also accept green on the back because I'm going to have to put the spice leaf in the back and sugar will come in here. So insert there and insert there. Did I bring enough filters? I didn't bring enough filters. I always forget these little details. I often think I should completely set up the machine and test it in advance and then just take and put all the supplies in the chest rather than bring over all the supplies that I think I need. Um, filters are over in this one. Yeah. So sugar cane in the back of that one. And spice leaf in the back of this one. See if I can put this away somewhere. Yes, okay. And I'll put the sugar cane there, and the sugar there. So to hook this up, since I have the filters in place, all I have to do is to hook it up to the item flow regulator. And stuff should continue to come through as long, in approximately equal amounts, as long as um, there's something in both of these two hoppers. So the last thing to do is to make sure that this machine has power all the way through. And I'll just dump this extra sugar in here, even though it won't get enough spice leaf to combine up. So it should all have power now. And it should be running right along. We've Have we made any cola sodas yet? Hmm, I don't see any. Oh. We haven't made any yet because I have not set it up to eject because it's on high here. If I just temporarily set that to ignore, it'll make colosotas. Let me just go ahead and set that back. Um, so between episodes, I will go ahead and set up my usual setup here with the redstone comparator, the QDS, and the connection going back to this machine to make sure that it only outputs when it has a redstone signal. Just the safety on this because I've had things forget quest several times now. The lag seems to make that problem a lot worse. And um, I think that's going to be it for this episode. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.